Security and access inside of Salesforce can be one of the most complex topics out there. And so I wanted to share a resource that I found very helpful and I reference often in my own Salesforce career, and that would be the Guide to Sharing Architecture. And that's available inside of the documentation at developer.salesforce.com. I will link to this down below, but this Guide to Sharing Architecture gives you a visual representation of how security and the security model is set up inside of Salesforce. and just so you know what you're looking at here, this is an upside down pyramid and these are different security mechanisms that you can enable in order to grant access to users that wouldn't otherwise have access to a certain record. And down here at the very base, we have profiles and permission sets and that's where a lot of the base level settings are done for your users as far as if they can even see an object, for example, or if they have read only or create, update and delete rights as well closer you get to the base of the security model, the more precise it is. And then to the right, we have this up arrow showing wider access. And the main concept here is that security models are typically structured in such a way to be most strict by default at the base. And then you open up further access by granting wider access through org-wide defaults, role hierarchy, settings, sharing rules, manual sharing, team access, and finally territory hierarchy access. And so there's more notes around each of these items found in the diagram, starting with profiles and permission sets. And then from there, talking about record ownership and queues, some notes about what happens if a single user owns more than 10,000 records as a best practice, what should you do? Then you get into org-wide defaults and the role hierarchy, and those kind of work hand in hand if you ever looked at that inside of Salesforce. And then they even give examples of role hierarchy use cases so that you can kind of wrap your mind around various situations or scenarios where you may want to do certain things related to a role hierarchy as far as granting or denying access to records to users depending on where they fall in the role hierarchy. And then we get into the public group side of things and the different ways that groups can be composed, not just with users, but other types of users, roles, roles and subordinates, and more. And you'll notice as well that a lot of this begins to layer on top of each other as well because we start getting into territories can be members of or consist inside of a public group as well. And so what's helpful is reviewing these use cases as well to compare and contrast, for example, public group use cases versus role hierarchy use cases, and you'll begin to understand the nuance and the difference between these different tools and mechanisms for setting security in Salesforce. And then we've got owner-based sharing rules, criteria-based sharing rules. You've got two different ways of doing those sharing rules, either owner-based or, or criteria-based. And then as well, you can get into manual sharing. That's where you can manually share records with other users. And then we've got teams and then finally territory hierarchy. So a lot of good in-depth documentation here related to security and access in Salesforce. That's the guide to sharing architecture found at developer.salesforce.com. I'll link down below for that as well. And if you found this Salesforce video helpful, please do like, subscribe. Also leave a comment down below for what you'd like to learn in Salesforce. And I just might make it my next video. Until then, I'll see you in the cloud.